onwards. Thank you, Chair, and thank you all for attending today. I would like to thank the Chief Executive of Australia Post for engaging with me recently and for listening to the concerns that many post office licensees have raised with me when they felt Australia Post was ignoring them. Thank you. What follows are some very concerning matters that also need to be addressed. And, and also, Minister, I, I have a question for you, um, second uh, after the first question to the Chief Executive. But I want to recognise that the Chief Executive um, is, and along with her management, are squeezed by the government's KPIs driving your business and your behaviour, but also the need for rural representation. So I want to acknowledge that right up front. So the first question to, to you, Ms Holgate. Uh, I hear that Australia Post is poaching business from its own licensees. Private senders of parcels are being approached directly by Australia Post and being offered a discounted rate. Australia Post are undercutting their own licensees and this is clearly poaching. The losses for just one licensee are estimated at around twenty to thirty thousand dollars per annum, and many more licensees have similar complaints. This would appear to be a blatant and willful breach of the licensed post office agreement, and it may well constitute a breach of contract and allow rescission of the LPO agreement and or damages. If I simply, and this is very simplistic, uh, average the poaching losses at, across 2,900 LPOs, then Australia Post is liable for $87 million. Now that is simplistic, but it just shows that the scale of the issue. Will Australia Post compensate the LPOs for these losses, or what will you do about it now? Thank you, Senator. And of course, if there are any individual circumstances that haven't been raised to my attention, um, we are more than happy to do so. I'm very pleased to report, though, that I think it's on the main the contrary to that. And I think it's highlighted not only by the results that I shared earlier about the strong revenue growth for our LPOs and the growth in their payments, but also that we have launched a program with our licensed post office partners where we're actually, we did a trial and we're actually partnering our licensed post offices with small businesses in the community. And we have given those licensed post offices the opportunity to sell business business parcel packages for the first time. That trial's gone incredibly well, and now we are actually rolling out that trial further. This is another important revenue stream for our licensed post offices. I will ask Dave to comment on anything further. And again, Senator, my apologies if there's a particular circumstance of a licensed post office who feel their business has been poached. Please let me know. But there are 700 corporate stores there are 3,600 licensed post offices. So there isn't that same um, you know, opportunity for corporate post offices to be doing that for Dave. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, we also have a customer transfer policy. So we do give 12 months of lost revenue if that was to occur. So if that's reported, we would definitely do that. Um, as Ms Holgate said, we are working through a program at the moment where we trialled that, but we'll be rolling out a program called the Essential 7 right across our network. And that gives the ability for our licensees to sell a number of different products that they haven't which would mean that we wouldn't have this issue. Um, we've also, with the payment review, whereby we increased the commissions for all the bulk mail, we've actually seen that increase significantly for our LPOs because obviously the, the difference they had in actually having a prepaid, they got a greater commission for their bulk, we've made it that's easy for them to actually upsell and continue to grow their customer. So as part of the LPO payment review, that was a key change that we implemented to actually help our LPOs grow their customers and maintain their customers. Thank you. Just as an aside, it seems that there are many complexities here and many unique circumstances, individual circumstances, and I understand it's difficult to get around that. But perhaps we could deal with that more later. Yes. Um, second question, though, is to the Minister. In in, in 1993, a representation allowance was implemented to pay licensees for delivering the government's legislated community service obligations. And these are important for Australia Post. I get that. that everyone here has acknowledged that, uh, that the Australia Post has a wonderful uh, reputation in the bush. Yet no one knows what it really includes in that representation allowance or how it was formulated. This is from an LPO. This task now consumes more than four hours of a licensee's time and hundreds of dollars in salaries and costs each day. The meagre allowance doesn't cover the costs incurred for supporting local communities and customers who need support. So at the 2014 Senate inquiry, Senator O'Sullivan stated, quote, either get rid of the community service obligations or pay licensees fairly for the services they provide. They are not there to subsidise Australia Post or the nation. Rural and regional community, that's the end of the quote. 
Rural and regional communities need the support. We, we can see that. They're providing a very valuable service. Uh, the LPAs are providing very valuable service. Will the government now, as a matter of urgency, pledge an immediate review and increase to this grossly inadequate payment? Senator, may, may I try and explain the payment first? And of course, if you have more questions, ask them on myself or the minister. Um, first of all, we pay our licensees post office partners a minimum payment of 40,000 Australian dollars a year. Just to put that in comparison, and I know this is always difficult to do because we have very different economies, but Dave and I spend a lot of time talking to other postal operators, what do they do? We recently spoke to the um, UK post offices. They have a minimum payment of around um, 15,000 pounds, which is about $30,000, so significantly less than ours. What we do with that minimum payment is give them enough money to be able to cover doing the duties of carrying our flag. Australia Post does not receive any money from the government for running a community service obligation. That money is to cover their duties of managing. It's a minimum payment for the letters and parcels services they do. I do appreciate, and I know firsthand, that many of our partners in the communities are a very trusted source, as you will have seen from the research this morning. So people go to those people to get advice. I witnessed firsthand how people went to them in the bushfires to ask advice about how do they contact their insurance company, for example. That's a service they're not paid for. That's actually not a service of Australia Post. What happens, though, is our post office people are so highly regarded locally, people generally go to them, perhaps even more than Google. But Dave, would you like to comment further? Uh, it's the, so the rep allowance covers a number of different areas, and I'm happy to send that to you to give you further information mm -hmm. yes, on that. Um, also, the inside what sits with a number of other payments, a lot of that customer service sits inside, also the payments we pay in mail management in those other areas as well. So it is complex in where it sits in multiple areas. Um, and, and really, we're looking at the services that Australia Post provide. Um, and as Ms Holgate said, there are many things that people come in that aren't inside what Australia Post actually do operate. Well, Ms Holgate's, so opening, so Ms. Holgate's opening comments reflected the, the focus on profit, which she, she must do in her position. We accept that. Um, but a lot of the services of her people, and I call the LPAs your people uh, in Australia Post, because they wear your flag, yep. then uh, they're really providing a government service to a rural area. And that makes it very difficult in your position. So I'm not, not trying to put any pressure on you that way. I'm, I'm trying to emphasise to the government that it is a complex situation. And if we keep challenging you about the LPOs, that may not be fair to you, and you may not be able to do what, what the LPOs really need. So I wouldn't, would enjoy that detail, more detailed discussion. Um, just one, one comment then, and the rest we'll put on notice unless we can come back to it. Last year, I drew your attention to the plight of the many licensees who are doing it tough. When I subsequently drew your attention, Ms Holgate, to the distress and mental health of one licensee, instead of offering mental health support, someone in Australia Post sent an investigator, which was pretty demeaning and, and intimidating in some ways and also potentially shameful, because everyone in the local community knew what was going on. Um, so I'm wondering what can be done there to make sure that a more personable approach is, is used. Senator, um, that particular circumstance, I may pass to Dave at a moment because as you, I think everybody's aware, he runs the post offices. But what I would like to reassure you, and I did follow up and check after we last spoke here in the Senate, that actually we have our um, work assistance program available to all of our partners, whether they're licensed post offices, delivery contractors. I absolutely agree with you. If you wear our badge, you're one of our people. And we made sure that actually everybody is able to have access to that assistance program. I'm very pleased to say that um, Mr. Barnes and Ms. Davis further down joined me as we went round to visit many licensed post offices who were impacted by the bushfires. Many of those people required help, not just counselling and support, but short-term financial help. And I'm really proud of the work that within 24 hours and 48 hours at most, all their requests were turned around. So I did follow through with your request last time, but on that particular circumstance, I may pass to Dave to comment further. 
Um, so Senator, we, we don't go to investigate anyone on those things. So really, it's a really ensuring we're out there in helping our, in, um, our licensees through mental health issues as well. Um, our, work our workforce appoint at assistance program has really been a key part to how do we help them. Um, so we, we have a number of teams that go out on different functions. So sometimes there are people who go out and do audits, as we do, because obviously we ensure that we are compliant with all of our regulatory requirements. So we're not saying in this case it was, but it's that we've got multiple people who visit our outlets. We have our network managers who go out to support them around their business. We have our audit team that go out to check to ensure they're paying their staff the correct wages, they're remitting their money in the correct way. So we've got a number of teams that we actually have go out there. So it, it may have just been a circumstance where someone thought it was around that issue, but there are multiple things that we always deal with. People, the LPAs in Australia Post, uh, from what we can pick up anyway, are very proud to be doing their work. They enjoy their work. They enjoy the interaction within the community. They enjoy being respected and treated well in the community. Um, they don't always see the same or feel the same from uh, Australia Post. And it seems to be a high level of inconsistency there. So that's just passing on to help you. Thanks, Senator. Senator. No. Senator. Ms. Holgate, we're Sorry. going to go to the opposition now for further questions. Senator Brown. Uh, 